Okay, today we will be, we'll be working in the red slice and be looking at standard normal probabilities. So this is one of the key lessons. And so let's take a look at some of these cryptic things that they give us. Now let's first of all uh, consider this first one. And then let's take a little bit of time to look at our notes for this. So I've got some notes for you. First thing you can do is to go find these notes directly above the click for the video and you can print these out. You will find that to be useful. Another thing that I think you will find to be useful is this worksheet uh, which is stored in document sharing. Uh, you need to go up there and click that and print a few of these out. This will help you to uh, organize your work through this area. And so what we will do now is get right into solving this problem. Now before we do that, we have to know a few things about this normal distribution, sometimes called the standard normal distribution, sometimes just called the normal curve, sometimes called the bell curve. But in any event, it is the most important probability distribution in all of statistics. Now, one thing we have to realize is that the area which is trapped under this curve and above the axis here, this area is a graphical representation of probability. So everything that we've talked about in probability applies here. And this area, this space under the curve represents probability. The total area under this curve is 1, once again representing the 100% chance that something is going to happen. And then, of course, we're going to be interested in particular pieces or slices. Typically, we are interested in a certain fraction of this probability, which may be uh, trapped under the curve to the left, to the right, or between a couple of these numbers down here at the bottom which are called z-scores or standard normal scores. This zero in the middle is the mean of the distribution and these numbers here, one, two, three, are actual numbers of standard deviations. So in the standard normal distribution, the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one. Now coming up with these areas uh, would be a very difficult thing except for the fact that we have the Alex calculator. And what the Alex calculator does for us is a very very useful thing. It has this button, the P of Z button, and once again this P stands for probability, which of course is area. So this button, the most important thing to learn is what does this button do? Answer, this button tells us the area under the curve to the left of a particular z-score. So let's go over here and look at our first problem. And we see the very first problem asks us for the area. So read this, the area or find the area under the curve to the left, notice that's a less than sign, of a z-score of negative 0.99. Let's set that up on one of our forms. Now notice that I've copied down our problem. What they're asking for is the area under the curve to the left, notice the less than sign, to the left of negative 0.99. So over here on our graphical uh, display, we have here the negative 0.99. That's almost but not quite equal to negative 1. And notice that they want the area which is to the left or less than in the z-axis here of uh, is negative 0.99, so they're looking for this here. Now once again, remember that on your Alex calculator, you're going to have a button. And the button that we care the most about is this one right here. Notice that this button tells us the area under the curve to the left of a z-score. So we simply click this button and in this spot here put negative 0.99 and it will tell us that answer immediately. And that answer is this. Okay, we want this to three decimal places, so in the third decimal place we have a one, the next digits is zero, and so we will have 0 0.161. Okay, now we get to our second problem, and let's take a look at it. We have the probability, the area under the curve to the right, notice a greater than sign, says the area under the curve to the right of a positive 1.52. And again, on our picture, notice then that we read this. What is the area under the curve to the right 
of a positive 1.52. So we look at our uh, little graphical display here. Here's one, here's two, here's approximately 1.52 and we want this area over here to the right. Now remember that the Alex calculator tells us not the area to the right, but the area to the left, it will give us this area, which is not what we want. Now remember, the area under the curve to the left of the z-score is what the button tells us, but we want the area to the right. So we're going to use the rule of complements here, and we're going to take one minus this area to get the area that we want. Let's go back over and do that. So we will take 1 minus the probability that z is less than a 1.52, and this will give us our area here. And so we want the three decimal places, 0 0.064, which should have gone here. Okay, and now we have one to do. This time, we want to read this a little differently. Now read this one, the area under the curve that is trapped between, when you have the two less than signs with the z between, pronounce that between, the area under the curve that is between negative 0.84 and positive 1.60. Now notice our illustration then would look like this. The area that is trapped under the curve that is between a negative 0.84 z-score and a positive 1.60. So we're interested in this area in here. Now notice that if we were to simply use the uh, P of Z button one time, it will tell us the area to the left. If we put in then the negative 0.84, it would tell us just this area, which we don't want. If we were to put in the 1.60, it would tell us all of this area to the left of that, which we don't want. But if you were to take all of that area and subtract this off, you would get what you do want. So what we want to do then is to go back to our Alex calculator, clear it, take the P of Z button of the bigger value, the 1.60, and then subtract the P of Z button for the negative 0.84. And that will give us what we want here which is going to be to three decimal places, 0 0.745. And obviously that is right, but the thing to notice here is that's a little bit complicated and hard to remember. So what I have done here is I have also in your notes on this section basically giving you a little summary here that if you are interested in the area to the left okay of a certain given z value but the area is unknown you simply do this if you have the area to the right of a certain z score and the z score is known the area is unknown in other words you want uh, this situation then it's one minus and if you want the area say that's trapped between two values. Use the P of Z on the bigger value and then subtract the smaller value to get this. So I've tried to show this in pictures, in the symbols, and then uh, which buttons that you push. So you can print that out and use that and hopefully that will be helpful for you.